Good afternoon, everybody. It's so amazing to be here at Global Star Venture Demo Day. And I do have to say, I am very, very impressed. It feels like I'm at a mini slush. <laughs> so really, really well done. I did not expect this. Um, so my name is Anna Ratala. I'm the, the head of Slush Singapore. And this is actually my very first time in uh, Korea. So I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I am based uh, actually in Singapore, but first time I'm, I'm coming to Korea, and it's so great that it's such a wonderful occasion that I get to be the first time in Korea at. So thank you so much, uh, CCEI, for kindly inviting me. I wanted to kick off my presentation with a little video. This is something that we started Slush Singapore event in September, where we welcomed almost 3,000 attendees, and we wanted to kick off that whole event with a little message, and I want you to hear that message right now. Welcome, change makers. Today, you are stepping into a world of breaking boundaries. It is time to write our own story. Are you ready not to learn something? But to change something. Or everything. So this is how we welcome 3,000 international attendees in September at Slush Singapore. Uh, can I just ask you, by the raise of hands, how many here has actually heard of Slush and know what we do? By the raise of hands. Okay, some, not so many. Um, by traditional sense, uh, Slush is a tech startup event that brings together startups, investors, corporates, and media at one place to learn from one another, to build connections, to um, uh, get inspired. But by non-traditional sense, we really are a catalyst. We are a platform to help the next generation of entrepreneurs forward. If you listen to the message, at the video, it welcomed all change makers. And that's really what Slush is all about. We're not about an event, we're about making change. What we want to do is we want to encourage the energy and action. We don't want our attendees and startups and investors to come and listen and just learn something. We want them to leave wanting to change something. So how does an event like that even begin? Well, let me tell you a little story. 11 years ago in Finland, where I'm from as well, although I'm based in Singapore now, um, 11 years ago in Finland, there were a couple of entrepreneurs that back in the days were not very well known. Now you might know them as people behind Angry Birds, Clash of Clans. But back then, nobody really knew who they were. But they were touring universities in Finland, talking to students about entrepreneurship. And at the end of their talk, they always asked how many out of the audience were considering becoming an entrepreneur maybe one day. And you know what? Out of 500 people, five hands went up. Only five. So they said, you know what? We have a problem because nobody wants to start businesses in Finland. Everybody wants to you know, graduate and go work for Nokia and all other established companies. But a country does not have a future if it does doesn't have people that want to start businesses, employ people, innovate, go out there to the world. So they decided to get together and grab some of their entrepreneur friends and just talk about entrepreneurship and technology and all the exciting things around that. 300 people showed up. It was very underground, it wasn't a big deal, just a small gathering. But people got really inspired. And they said, next year, let's do it again. 500 people came. The year after, 1,500 people. And if you fast forward to today, actually to last year, 20,000 attendees from all over the world flew to Helsinki at the worst weather possible in the Nordics at the end of uh, November. Al Gore was there to welcome everybody to slush in Helsinki last year. So how did it become so big? What made Slush and makes it one of the leading tech startup events in the world, well, it's not really the event itself. It's 
why it's being put together and how it's being put together. Slush is a non-for-profit organization and it's a grounds up organization. It's been built by young people, students, entrepreneurs and change makers that wanted to come together and create a platform that looks like them and feels like them. It wasn't that anybody said, hey, we want to build an event or we want to, uh, you know, uh, put Finland on the map or whatever. It was just really passion of creating something for the community by the community. And you can see some of the photos from our slush events uh, throughout the years. And uh, I mean, a couple of years ago, for example, there was fire on stage in Helsinki, like real fire, because somebody just thought from our team in Helsinki that, hey, wouldn't it be cool to have fire on stage? Yeah, let's do it, you know? And that's really the kind of mindset that categorizes uh, slush. And I'll tell you an interesting story. Um, a few years ago, um, so obviously Slush over the, the years that it's been existing has really, really sparked that interest towards startups in Finland. And now if you ask young people what do they want to do when they graduate or when they grow up, they want to be entrepreneurs, right? They want to work in their hoodies and sneakers and they want to create things and make things happen. So a few years ago at World Economic Forum, our former then prime minister was asked how, you know, Finland has become such a startup nation. How was that possible? What did the government do? And do you know what he said? I don't know. Ask Slush, they did it. And that's a true story. And that really is at the essence of what Slush is. It's really created by the grounds up movement, by the people, by the entrepreneurs and future entrepreneurs. And of course, today, there is a lot of really, really good collaboration going on between the, the government of Finland and between Slush. But the core is still in the people that actually make it happen. And as an example of that, uh, in Slush in Helsinki, there are 2,500 volunteers that actually come and help create the event. They're not paid to do that. They're there because they're so passionate about creating this platform. And as you can imagine, who could be the best to know what startups and entrepreneurs want than startups and entrepreneurs themselves and people that have that mindset. And that's really been at the core of, of Slush and how it has uh, come about. This picture is from Slush Singapore in September with all our volunteers. We had 200 volunteers. Our event is about 3,000 attendees, so we had a slightly smaller group of people, but really, really enthusiastic people. So a few years ago, Slush started making waves in Asia. So there's one Slush event organized in Tokyo, uh, one in Shanghai, and uh, I'm heading the one in Singapore. Uh, we started in 2016. And the whole idea was very much the same. It wasn't to say, oh, let's do and go and do a slush event in this and this country because it might be interesting. We thought, hey, you know what? This ecosystem needs a grounds up movement. It needs a platform that's created by the community for the community. And especially across Asia, there's a lot of talent and a lot of drive and a lot of fantastic young people that want to start businesses we wanted to make sure that they have a platform where they can show that enthusiasm, where they can be inspired, where they can meet real connections, investors, corporates, media, but where they can feel like it looks like them. It's not just something that's organized from the top down, it's organized from the grounds up. And that's exactly what we did uh, in Singapore in 2016. And let me tell you, it was tough. The first time putting something like that together, but we had a fantastic group of uh, people that were working with us uh, to, to make it happen, and we did. And uh, this year, we already held the third Slush Singapore event, and the feedback has been amazing. When we started in 2016, uh, we collaborated closely also with the Singapore government. They were very supportive, and what was really interesting to me personally, right, coming from the Nordics, living in Singapore, it was really interesting to see that mindset change even from the government, right, of, of Singapore, who said, you know what, we acknowledge that there needs to be something which is grounds up, and we want to welcome you, and we want to work together with you, and we want to support you. 
You're the ones who run it because you know what needs to be done, but we're going to be right here supporting you. And they were very open-minded and, and understanding of the ways how this collaboration could work. And we were extremely happy. In it. And, and I think that that really is the key, to have at the core the people that really have the passion and drive and know what's needed, supported by the people, like the governments, uh, that actually are able to build that basis and help them, uh, you know, taking the steps up. And that's why today, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've been incredibly impressed by learning how much CCEI is doing for Korean startup ecosystem to help the Korean startups go global and really make a name for themselves, right? So that one day they can become the next Hyundai's and Samsung's and LG's, right? To really show what Korea has and, and what's the potential. And I'm really excited uh, and looking forward to seeing also the Korean startups at Slosh in Helsinki in, at the beginning of December. I think it's a fantastic platform to showcase what you really have and what Korea has to offer, but also learn a lot of things. It's always a learning journey, and I think platforms like that are really great and crucial that you can go and learn and take some of those learnings back to Korea and help your fellow startups to also grow. Um, so I'm really, really excited to, you know, see how we can also collaborate from Slush perspective uh, here in Korea. We've never really had any presence here. This is the first time when we've actually come in and had some presence. So we're really, really happy and honored by the invitation. And I'm sure that going forward, we'll be able to work together uh, in identifying some of the areas where we can collaborate and how we can, you know, help Korean startups to really grow and, you know, get to the next level. So really, really excited by that. Thank you so much. And um, I think lastly, here's if you, if you guys want to get in touch, uh, you know, via social media, you can follow us or drop us a note. Um, but finally, I would like to give perhaps three tips for everyone that is going to Slush in Helsinki in a few weeks. I know that there are some startups that are going to be there, uh, maybe some of you as well. Um, so three things that I think is important to remember. Uh, number one, this is a very practical thing. There is something called a matchmaking tool, uh, which is a proprietary tool in the app, uh, which helps you to basically identify the right people to meet. This is the first time in Slush history when all attendees, so imagine 20,000 attendees, all of them can actually connect with one another with the app, and it helps you to match. So if you're a startup, it helps you to match with uh, the most potential investors and vice versa. So please make sure that you use, make use of that tool since it's available. My tip number two, there are about, I think, 250 different side events and pre-events before Slush. Uh, so please go to those events, identify which ones are most interesting, and uh, sign up for those events. Uh, that's really where you can build relationships, get to know people, and that's how you can make an impression, whether you are on stage pitching at the pitching competition at Slush or not, you can still make a, a positive impression by meeting people and building relationships. And my tip number three, this is the most important, regardless if you're a startup or a government representative of who, I know that, you know, just be brave. You know, be, have the courage to go out to people, to talk to them, to tell about what you do, uh, you know, just, just, just say hello. I know that a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, are very conscious about, you know, the English skills and whatnot, but don't worry about that. In Finland, English is also not our native language, uh, and you guys are doing great, so don't worry about that. Really show your personality, your Korean personality, which I think is going to win a lot of people over. So with that, I would like to uh, thank uh, one more time CCEI for inviting me. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what we can uh, do here in Korea together with Slush. Uh, and um, yeah, if you want, I'm, I'm available here the whole day to talk and to chat. Come to meet up. <laughs>
Next, it is my privilege to welcome Mr. Sandy Li Shenzhi from Slush Shanghai to the stage. Please also welcome him with a warm round of applause. Yeah. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sandy Li Shenzhi and uh, originally I come from China, Beijing. Uh, 1995, I moved to Sweden to study uh, at the university there. My major was international marketing and I didn't know that how cold and dark the Swedish winter is really. Uh, but I survived and uh, many Chinese don't understand like how can you still live in Sweden in a smaller city come on you come from Beijing and uh, now it's already the 22nd no 23rd year I've been living in Sweden uh, but I really enjoyed it uh, so uh, and um, it's great to be here uh, and to be uh, invited by the CCEI and thanks for the event. I should say that during my work with the Chinese government and uh, big companies, I'm very impressed about this location because in China, a governmental involved uh, company event will not be as uh, fashion as cool as this. Uh, I think that's also the character of South Korea. And I had a long discussion with uh, the organizer, if it's okay, I come like this, or I should put the suit and the tie and all this. And uh, we agreed to do like this. And if you remember, uh, the founder of Slash and also the founder of Angry Bird, Peter Westerbacca, he always go around with a red jumper around. And sometimes I told him that, hey, come on, Peter, you're not the father of Angry... You are the father of Angry Bird, but you are not angry anymore. Why don't you change the clothes? And no, that's our spirit. And I think today uh, we want to give you the spirit so you know that uh, when um, you come to Finland, you should be part of the Slash team. And, uh, of course, you're going there to... Uh, get uh, hopefully investment. That's why my topic today is, is all about money. And this is not because I'm Chinese and there are a lot of money in the Chinese market, because I think uh, we will let you get prepared in order to get uh, uh, the right uh, partner and the investment. So the first question, where to get money? Uh, of course, you're going to Slash, and uh, from Anna's presentation, you know that Slash is a great platform. You will meet a lot of people. And uh, there are also a lot of money in Scandinavia and Europe, actually. So, for example, this is an organization in Sweden, quite have a similar role as the CCEI. And uh, you should remember the, the, uh, the website, because they give uh, support to Swedish companies about um, uh, startups and uh, innovation and different funds. And then there is this organization called Almi, and they give both uh, advi uh, uh, advice and also support and money-wise. Uh, it's very important to have uh, an ecosystem that works. In Scandinavia, the government and uh, academy, companies, uh, big companies, uh, startups are really working together, and they have a good communication. And this is what I have been trying to help the Chinese government and the Chinese companies to build in the last 20 years. And I see that, uh, you know, you have this, through this great event, I think that it's very possible to create a great platform in South Korea and to be very, very competitive. And uh, at the European level, of course, right now, it's very important to have this uh, Horizon 2020 project, and they have specific fund given for the European companies to work with countries like South Korea, China, and I think you should know. And uh, if you know the interest from the investors in Europe, in Scandinavia, probably you will have a better pitch to get their support. And of course, there are more money in China and USA and even more. And in China, of course, you see that uh, the investment has grown a lot, both for the venture capital and uh, private equity, and uh, a lot in the uh, Internet of Things and uh, Internet uh, business. Uh, we don't have to go through this, but you know that uh, actually the capital market is very hot and they're looking for good objects. So it's pretty much about how you can find them. And second is why they will give money to you. Of course, it's important to have innovation. You need to have new things. 
uh, and uh, then it's very important to have your innovation patented. And uh, as you know that Scandinavia, for example Sweden, was once the most innovative country in the world. And actually later they realize the reason Sweden is so good is they always patent their innovations. So China learned, put a lot of money in patent, and Korea, of course, and suddenly now these countries are getting very innovative. What I think personally is all countries are innovative. Uh, I think in Asia people are even more innovative, but maybe it's not as aggressive as the first step. But when you have a good innovation, they are very innovative to make it to the market to have the second generation of innovation. And this is very important. But then, uh, when you have the patent, you protect it. But then you have to bring it out. Then it's very important to have this cross-border thinking. What is cross-border? You have to think about what your competitor is doing, what other business is doing, and also how about the time frame, and several things. For example, here I found this uh, great network among all CCEIs in different regions, and we have different uh, focus areas for different regions. But how about, for example, if a company dealing with a smart farm, and they can add the software, a solution, IT, and meanwhile they attract tourism, and they get energy, new energy efficient solutions. So by combining that, by combining different cross-border thinking, then your product is getting more competitive uh, advantage. And this is a very important thinking, because many entrepreneurs started to think, oh, I develop, I have a great idea, now I develop that. And later on, they realize they are getting more and more isolated. And this is not the right way. And then, that's what I'm saying, you are not alone. You are thinking about competition, but even sometimes your competitor can be part of your business. If you think bigger, if you think more like a platform, more like um, uh, the ecosystem, then I think you can get more people. And I think probably this is how your investor's interest is, not only about one product, one company, but kind of platform thinking. You have to think as a platform. And uh, then the next point, why they will give money to you, is you have to start to sell right away. Because you're thinking about getting investment, but actually if you can get market order already, it's much easier to get better investment and to protect your rights better. Uh, we have just started a new business. Uh, actually, I have created uh, several companies during my 23 years of Swedish uh, living. Uh, the latest project is very exciting, is that we are building the biggest wooden house, uh, module-based wooden house production base in China. Because China built a lot of buildings and uh, is recently they started to give uh, the new policy saying that the new buildings have to be module-based and not build everything on site. And uh, we in Asia know how to build buildings in metal, in uh, concrete, but not in wood. And in Sweden, uh, in Finland, they already build houses like over 10 floors high with wood. So we're making that. And of course, we also look for investment. But uh, one, we told them that we have recently got an order in the Chinese market for 10 million US dollar. Suddenly, all the investors come to us. So this is something that's very interesting to think. You know, you can start to sell already. Meanwhile, you're looking for the investors. And the third point, I want to talk a little bit about the culture difference, because Scandinavia is quite different uh, from Asia. And uh, here I have two uh, tips to give it to you. First, you have to think Scandinavian. Uh, in Scandinavia, people are, um, let's say, they live a more simple life. Uh, they try to minimize a lot of things. Uh, they don't want to buy things, but they want to buy really good stuff. And uh, in Finland, Finnish people are very uh, famous for not talking too much. So if you sell very aggressively like uh, American, maybe it will not work. But as you've seen, when Anna was talking, she gave you another picture. Because Finnish girls does talk quite a lot. So how to present yourself in uh, Finland as a slash event? And how Korean are you? Because in general, I think Korean has an advantage than the Chinese. 
because one, the European CEO, Chinese, and they will think, oh my God, my product will be copied by you right away. But if you're Korean, they start to think about Gangnam style, they think about all the fashion, all the funny things, so you have a better entrance than me as a Chinese, actually. So uh, then I want to point out that uh, Slash is a very good global network and uh, you get both experience, you get the right people. And uh, right now, of course, we are seeing the event in December Slash Helsinki as our goal. But I want you to go see it more like a door who can help you to enter, to know a lot of people, to get new opportunities. So actually, the real Slash thing will happen after the new year. So it's very important you are prepared. How to be prepared? So you should, of course, have your presentation ready. Uh, we will go through that afterwards. We are very excited uh, to go through and give you some comments. And also, how about your business card? Is it already in English? How about the website? Uh, will this website be accessible from uh, Europe as well? And uh, do you have a business model? If suddenly you get an offer of, uh, let's say, $2 million, what to do? You know, do you have a plan with that? And actually, now let's review all these five points. Uh, I didn't ask, uh, I, didn't, I was not asked from the CCEI to do uh, some promotion for them, but I really think this logo is very interesting because actually, uh, me as a Chinese, I see that there are several elements. There are three red and three blue. If you think about your company, maybe you have three good advantage, but you are also missing some three part. Now let's go look at this uh, five points again. Where, first one, where to get money. There we talk about finance, financing. Second one, why you? Are you an entrepreneur or you actually just an uh, innovator. Because in Scandinavia, some people get very encouraged to start their company. And afterwards, they say, hey, actually, I just want to invent things. I'm not really fun of uh, doing all the administration, sales, and all this. And some entrepreneur, after struggling for five, six years, uh, they suddenly, oh, I found a job in ABB, in uh, Ericsson. Now I change. So. I think being a true entrepreneur, you need to be suffered for quite a long time. And it's a very lonely journal, and you have to be uh, ready, you have to be sure that you are really making that. So actually, the second point, why you, we're talking about the sustainability of your company. How far can you really run it? In Sweden, there are a lot of generation-shifting companies. Let's say the grandfather started a company and no grandchildren want to follow. What will you do? What is the value of the company? So, second point is about sustainability. And the third point, culture difference. That's, we talk about the culture difference between Scandinavia and uh, Korea, but also what is the culture difference between your company and other companies? Actually, we talk about the company culture, which is the core value of your company. Do you have that, or you only have a product, or you only have a technology just get patented? If you only get a technology, probably this company will not go very, very far. And number four, global networking. In a way, in a way of sense, we're talking about sales. You go to Slash to find the investor, you're also going to slash to find new market and probably new customers. So number four, we talk about sales. And number five, when you have prepared all this, maybe, hopefully, you get some order. Shall we say congratulations? Probably not. Because first, when you have got orders, you realize, oh my God, I didn't have the product ready, I didn't have the language translation ready, the price setting probably was wrong. We have to deal with new regulations in the European market in order to enter. Of course, this uh, beauty skin care thing is right, but how about we will, you know, we, we probably we have to get a medical certificate in order to enter the market. And how about the after sales? How about uh, the distribution channel? And then suddenly you realize you're not ready at all. So this is another way to think you know, before I go to Slash. That's why I'm thinking about, think about this as a network. You have to analyze 
which three red you have and which three blue you are missing. And I think through the presentation this afternoon, we, uh, we will hear different companies' presentation, and probably you will find, hey, that company is dealing with something completely different than us, but they're really good in sales. And we are very good in technology, and that one is really good in uh, uh, R&D development. Then you have a new uh, consortium before going to Finland. And I think that's very, very interesting. So let's, I'm going to finish my, my talk. So as we said, today the topic is all about money. But is it really about money? Are you really going to Finland to search money? First thing, you have to present your company very well. That's why I'm, no matter where I go, of course, I want to present my company as well. My company is called Yes International Group. Uh, and of course, that's the only color you have here. So I think even I showed the main topic, a lot of people paid attention about yes, that's important. And I was actually influencing you all through my presentation by only using the blue and red colors. So uh, this is the contact information uh, about uh, me, and this is my company in Sweden, and this is my company in Beijing, uh, the two main companies. and. Um, why I chose the company name, yes, because that's very positive, and that's the logo, and you should think what you see from that. And uh, back again, uh, today it's about Slash, and what is Slash, actually? I don't remember if Anna mentioned or anyone you know. Slash is kind of like snow, you know, and it's because actually December is a very bad month. And nobody wants to go to Finland because the country looks completely different. In summer, it's great. In winter, it's ugh. You know, you don't want to dirty your shoes and all this. And that kind of thing is slash. But, you know, actually, even the worst is not that bad. So slash becomes a new thing, and slash, I give you a new uh, translation, my interpretation of slash. Remember, my name is, oi, so go back. My name is Sandy Lee Shenju, so if you take the first letter, is S-L-S-H. So compared with slash, the only thing that's missing is you. That is you. So slash is Sandy Lee and you. And so actually, everything you see, probably you will find another meaning of that. And no matter what we call that marketing sales or inspiration or innovation, you need to have the third eye to look things differently. If Steve Jobs had to think different, at least you should see different. So I want to finish my talk with the logo. If you look, as you see, this is a guy running the S. So that's how we want to serve you. But if you move your head to the left, and look at the logo, suddenly you see our company name again. And this is the key words you have to remember. Going to Finland, believe yourself, get the best result from Slash, and say yes. Thank you very much.